Oh, I look scary. I look like I'm about to tell a ghost story. <laughs> this duck is a potential murderer, right? I'm just saying that now. Here's one I made earlier. Happy days. What, 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 what's a Canadian geese do? You just make a stupid noise, right? Yeah, and they said the big red was due. Ooh, we've just had a little knock on the right arm rod. Right, here I am, back at Topper Manor and back to the home of Big Red. Round number two, I'm coming for you. Big Red, let's have it. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting me, subscribing, liking, and sharing, and commenting. I try to read as many comments as I possibly can. And I try to get back to, well, I pretty much read all the comments and I try to get back to as many people as I can, as and when I can. But um, yeah, first things first, just want to say hello and a shout out to the guy that actually recognized me when I came down here. Um, <laughs> the first thing he said when he saw me was, you're after Big Red, aren't you? And I was like, he knows the score. So yeah, big shout out to you. He said he watches me after Gogglebox. So I hope you enjoyed Gogglebox if you're watching this one. There's two other people here um, fishing in pegs one and two down by the pellet feeder. That's where I was last time. If you haven't seen my last video, the first session where I came down here to try and catch Big Red, I hooked one and lost it and had another one. I think it was 19 pounds, something like that, just under 20. So um, I didn't really come here. I mean, I didn't plan this session. It was a bit of a spur of the minute thing. Um, I've got two days off work, so I thought I'm going to do a night session um, and I'm going to try and catch Big Red. Now, some of the guys that I was speaking to as I turned up, there were some people doing some day uh, fishing on here and they said that Big Red was due. I don't know, I'm guessing that Big Red comes out um, sort of March, April, early time of year. And I don't think he's been out yet this year. So if he's due, this could be a very interesting session. I'm actually coming back here next month. So twice in a month. I think it's I think it's about five weeks, twice in five weeks. The guy that was in the point swim, which is like the middle swim that sticks out, um, he actually that's three three down from me. He actually said that he had five fish today, which is really promising. So I was going to jump in. I put my I originally put my bucket behind his um, behind his swim and said, if it's okay with you, I'll jump in sort of when you leave. And he said, that's no worries. As I took a little walk around the lake, I saw. Right, and I need your help with this, guys. Lots of little fish. See that little one swell there? I saw lots of that happening against sort of... See these two trees here? I've baited up along there. I've baited up that... that a lot Between the two trees, I've chucked a load of bait in there. Now, I know it looks like a lot of bait, but where I've spread it out, it's actually probably a very thin layer um, of carpet I've put across there. And I'm basically going to chuck one rod out to the left of it, one rod to the right of it. But yeah, I need your help because all these little fish that are jumping, does that mean that just because there's little fish there, does that mean that big fish are likely to be there as well? Or is it just a case of they're just little fish, they flap around all over the lake? I mean, I'm not seeing little fish flap, little, <laughs> little fish flap around over there. And also, if you notice, look at the wind. See the wind? It's a very cold wind. But if you come over to this spot here, it's sheltered. The wind isn't affecting the lake there, is it? So I'm wondering if they're sat on the back of that. I don't know, I did see one fish come out over there. It wasn't very big, but he came out over there. Um, it was definitely a carp. And so, yeah, that's the plan of attack. That's the plan of action. I've got my two rod, my two uh, 10 foot insurgent rods. And uh, yeah, like I say, one to the left tree, one to the right tree, and that is gonna be the spot. And here's the mix that I put out there. There's some 10 mil, 14 mil fruit and nuts, Parker Bates. There's some sweet corn, there's some chops, and there's some hemp and some um, crushed hemp in there as well and magic dust there's also parker baits og uh, fruit and nut sauce in there as well i even think i put some flat spot on it um so yeah it's got plenty of healthy goodness for the fish plenty of smell plenty of attraction and with that a layer of that on the bottom i'm going to fish a wafter uh, fruit and nut wafter on one and i'm going to fish a 14 mil bottom bait with a yellow topper
Well, there we go, it's 20 past six and both traps are set. The right hand one went slightly off the spot, but I don't mind that because um, often people have told me, you know, I'm still learning, whatever, but people have often told me that if you bait up a spot, often the bigger fish, they'll feed off the edge of the spot. So I'm gonna leave that out there, I'm happy with that. The left one is on that left hand tree, the right one's just to the right of that right hand tree. We got a chance, the baits are out there. We got the bait spray on the wafter, it's not PVA friendly, unfortunately. Just a quick note on PVA, in my last video when I was here, I got so many comments of you guys giving me all sorts of tips, so thank you very much. It's, um, it's very helpful and it's made me realise that actually there are a lot of good people in the fishing world, in the carp fishing world, because I just want to touch on it quickly. Um, when I first started carp fishing, or even just a match angler, I always felt like people were judging you, people thought, oh, who's this noddy or whatever, do you know what I mean? Like. It's almost like you walk onto a lake and people are like looking at you and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't like that, right? If people don't know, or if people do things their own way, or people have an idea and, and, do, and fish a certain way that they want to fish, I don't think people should judge them. If people find things interesting, slightly different or odd, then question them. Don't judge them. Go over to them, ask them what they're doing, find out why they're doing what they're doing and use it because there might be something in there that you can take away that you haven't thought about and put it into your fishing. So I think we should all help each other out. Less judgment. But, and that's what I was going to say. Everybody that's subscribed to this channel are fantastic. Everyone in the comments, everyone's so helpful and supportive. But don't just be helpful and supportive to me, guys. I want you to be helpful and supportive with each other. If you see each other on the bank, go and say hello, talk in the comments and let's just make a big, good community here. It's come across a little bit stormy, very overcast. I thought it was going to rain at one point. It's, they've not give rain. But uh, yeah, it's still relatively windy. It's trickling along from left to right. The clocks, did, they actually changed. They, they went forward an hour um, last night. So it's going to get darker quicker. And again, last time I was here, my bites came as we started to lose the light. So that could be a good thing. But look, there's little fish jumping. See it? Just jump over there. There's a, look. Something's just jumped over there. They're waking up. They're waking up. Come on. Oh, we've just had a little knock on the right hand rod. <laughs> Is it going to go? Come on. It's literally been out for 10 minutes. Not even out. Five minutes. But yeah, um, so, fruit and nut, 14 mil. They've come straight out the bag. But look at all, this, all the coating that it comes with. Oh, I love that. It's like not like your standard boily. Like, this would be like, I mean, it's still got fleck on this one. It's not as much as this one, say, for example. But it's a double dusting that Parker Baits do. If you haven't seen this bait before, guys, it's Parker Baits. And what they do is they steam their baits, and it keeps all the nutrients locked in, and the flavours locked in. So rather than boil them, they're steamed. If you want to find out more about Parker Baits, or even order your own, go and check them out on the website, Parker Baits. And they do all other bits as well. So you've got, this is a flat spot, which does exactly what it says on a tin. And this is a fruity version. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it if you haven't already. But it creates a flat spot on the surface. So not only when you cast out, you can put it on your bait. You can put it on your boilies and your spod mix. Oh, it's PVA friendly as well, that one. Um, so when you cast it out, it creates a flat spot so you can see exactly where your bait is. And not only that, it stays on the bait. So if in three hours time, all of a sudden a flat spot appears where, you cast, where you've cast it, you know that there's something around there grubbing up all the bait and it's creating that flat spot because more of the oil's coming off. This is what I'm using today with the bait spray on it. So this is 14 mil cork dust wafters. I know a lot of you guys that watch my videos, you know all about this anyway. I've got some pineapple fluoro pop-ups. Well, there's only half a tub left, I've used quite a bit of them. Um, we've also got the OG fish wafters. Um, yeah, we've got some other bits and bobs in there as well. They've been soaked in a flat spot and magic dust. I've got some fruit and up pop-ups, small 10 mils. What are these? Oh, there's more wafters. Got some more pop-ups. But yeah, they do a big range of things, guys. So if you want to check them out, Parker Baits, and you can uh, get 10% off if you want to, if you haven't ordered or used these before, you get 10% off by using code South Coast Angler at checkout. Right, well, it is now half past eight. It's pitch black and I'm looking very orange. I'm using my orange light on here which i never use yeah my normal bb light for some reason like it always turns on in the bag and then by the time i come to use it the battery's dead so it's frustrating but i'm gonna have to find a way of making sure that that doesn't keep happening and this is really heavy to hold so <laughs> i'm gonna 
put it down. There you go. Gonna get a real bad angle of me right here now. Oh, I look scary. I look like I'm about to tell a ghost story. I haven't brought my stove with me. There's not gonna be any cooking because I know Bry from Aquatic, Aquatic College is gonna be very upset that there's no cooking in this video. But um, no, I'm just, I, it's too easy for me to bring burgers and sausages and stuff and just sit here and just cook. And I don't need to do that. So I've got myself a sandwich um, and a bag of crisps and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So it's just simple grub. If I was doing two nights, then probably would have bought some food, but I just don't think I need it. And I've just redone the rods because I had to pop to the car. So I reeled the rods in, redone them. Like I say, it's pretty much pitch black now anyway. So they're going to stay out for the night. Um, and as we always do this, we always do this. One time, <laughs> it's going to work. I'm going to say what I always say. And you know what's coming. If you don't see any footage of me before the morning, I'll see you in the morning. But hopefully, the next clip you'll see is me with a carp. You watch this now transition to the daytime. Good morning. We didn't have anything last night. Oh, here we go. This is intense, isn't it? This isn't... You guys are now thinking, oh, what's the next clip going to be? The daytime or a fish? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Good morning. <laughs> what a shock. Nothing during the night. <laughs> no, I'm very, very surprised. Usually, if I go for a session, I do a night, I reel it in, usually often what happens is the bait's mangled or there's silt on the hook or something. I don't know. I've reeled these two rods in and they've both come back absolutely fine, like no problem whatsoever. The bait's not been touched. There's no silt on the hook. There's nothing. They've just come back in fine. So that tells me that either the fish weren't on the feed or just not didn't come across the spot. Um, I don't. I wouldn't have done anything any different. So we're gonna forget about what happened last night. The fact that we didn't catch any fish. Today's a new day. We're gonna hit it. I've already redone the rods. Now, ironically, I've moved both the rods off the spot there's a lot of movement on the water like there was yesterday nothing big showing but there's a lot of little swirls coming up so i've just chucked my left hand rod i flicked it out not even halfway just where there's a lot of showing i'll show you in a minute because the water's going mad but again there's no i can't there's no sort of big fish it's just small stuff but i'll show you i've just put it about halfway out to the left not even not even halfway to the left and then my right hand rod last night I could hear them and they were in the middle of the lake. So my right hand rod has gone out towards the middle of the lake because there's nobody else in the next one, two, three, four, five swims. I've just dashed it out across to the middle of the lake. I've also changed over. Um, I was fishing a 14 mil fruit and nut bottom with a yellow topper. I'm now using a, uh, well, a trimmed pineapple Parker Bates pop-up orange on both of them with the 14 mil steel as a bottom bait so it should just pop it up from the floor just give that extra bit of visual you know it's high vis it's orange hopefully today there's something special in store for us well i was talking about the movement on the water honestly it's just like little look just yes okay it's little fish but why why is this happening why is there lots of little fish showing why is there lots of little swirls in the water like there's obviously fish here Yes, okay, they're only small and I haven't seen anything big, but there has to be something in that. You know, if there's little fish here, look again. Surely there's bigger fish here. Really? Come on. Again, guys, if you can help me out with that, that would be absolutely brilliant. I say the left hand rod has gone out to about, I mean, it's still not quite bright enough, but probably about in line with those shadows there, those three trees. I mean, I didn't wrap up on nothing. I literally just chucked it because of the movement on the water. Good morning, Mr. Duck. Oh, actually, I've got a story to tell you. The drama I woke up to this morning. This duck is a potential murderer, right? I'm just saying that now. 
I woke up to a load of commotion this morning. Like usually it's the Canadian geese like doing whatever they do. I don't know, do they they don't chirp, do they? What 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 what's a Canadian geese do? Just make a stupid noise, right? This morning I've woken up to a load of flapping and I'm like, oh it's just birds flapping in the water. And it's going on, and it's going on, and it's going on, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And it's in the swim next to me, and I look out, and there's like some ducks, and I'm just like, oh, they're just washing their wings or whatever, whatever ducks do, you know? And then they start drifting over into my swim, and I get more of a look at it, and I'm like, that's a bit of a free-for-all, that is. What it is, is two male ducks, and they're drowning a female duck. Now, I, at first, I was like, oh, they're just getting a bit frisky. But... As I was watching it more, what they were doing was they were grabbing by the... They were using their beak to grab the female duck and dunk her head under the water. And there were two of them. One of them had hold of, her, like, her wings, and the other one had hold of her neck and was like... And I was like, what the hell? They're trying to kill her. So I've gone over, picked up a landing net, and I'm, like, swinging my net over them, and they're just completely ignoring me. And I'm like, what's going on? So I step a bit closer, and then they they get the hint, and they I think the male ducks sort of fly away, and the female sort of ducks underwater, and the males go that way, and then the female pops up over in. I think she got away but I was just thinking if that's a mating call I'm glad I ain't a duck <laughs> also these weathermen or women or however people identify these days need to really reconsider their jobs because we were told no rain last night and okay it didn't slash it down but Bivy's pretty wet here they are look the gang the blood brothers Plotting their next move, look. I know what you're up to. I'm watching you boys. Well, what I am going to do is I'm going to give it a, a few hours and just see if there's any reaction to the new bait or the new sort of spot. So um, if no luck, then in a few hours' time, I'm probably just going to switch up and try a, a stiff hinge rig with a little pop-up just to try something different, you know? Maybe they're not feeding on the bottom. Um, I don't have any zig setups with me, which is schoolboy error because I probably should um but yeah in the next couple of videos i'm going to be trying out a bit more zig sort of stuff because i still haven't really delved into that sort of area of my fishing yet but as it's going to start changing weather um the sun will bring well from what i've learned the sun will bring the fish up higher in the water so zig fishing is something that i'm going to get on this season um, as it starts to warm up i will slowly start to introduce that into my into my uh into my game if you like Time for a sausage sarni, I think. Here's one I made earlier. Happy days. Mm. Well, this swim right up the far side, I think it must be number 10 or number one. I'm guessing it's number 10. It's the end swim, the furthest away from the car park. And it dominates a lot of water, but it only dominates that section of water. And I just feel like it's, it's almost like a bowl. And I just feel like if there's no fish that have gone in there, and you're in that bowl, you could be fishing. Oh, do you know what I mean? I mean, I know the fish move about the lake, but if you're fishing like here, like I am, or whatever, you, you, you're sort of like, in, you know, in the middle of the lake sort of thing, whereas down there you're tucked away. But if the fish are hiding up in there, you could have it off in there, couldn't you? But then again, if there's no fish in there, you're relying on the fish to be able to move in there. It's an interesting one. I'm gonna have to do a session that swim one time. I don't know, I don't know. Whack, whack, whack. You guys never fail to surprise me. Everywhere I go, somebody... I, I don't mean to say that in a way that I'm not like trying to say like I'm some sort of celebrity or something, but it baffles me because every time I'm out on the bank fishing, someone comes up to me and says they watch my videos. And I've just met Kaz and he's up here with his dad. And they're the other two guys that are fishing down in pegs one and two. And um, they've had a couple of fish each. So well done to you guys. And... Uh, annoyingly somebody's just turned up to fish a day session I think and they've jumped out into that middle swim where I was gonna go where that guy had five fish out yesterday I was gonna move up there I was gonna move up there um, but unfortunately just as I was thinking about making a move somebody's just jumped in there which is annoying because there has been a lot of fish showing um, uh, I should have moved earlier but it is what it is I'm gonna stick it out in this swim hopefully we can draw the fish in um, there's 250 plus fish in here so I'm sure even though you know there's some showing in the middle I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some moving around hopefully that sun comes out a little bit later and it might just push the fish around the lake so yeah I don't know all we can do is sit back and hope well look at this the sun's starting to come out 
And it's looking pretty nice out here now. The wind has changed direction. Yesterday it was blowing left to right. Today it's blowing right to left. Which means if the fish are following the wind, they're going to be get, they're going to be swinging around now and getting pushed down to our end. No, my luck. They'll be sat at the bloody back of it now. But having said that, I did say I was going to leave my rods out till twelve and then change over onto a stiff hinge. Well, I've decided I'm going to change them both onto stiff hinges because what else have I got to try? Got nothing else to lose. Here I've got a trim down. Parker Bakes Pineapple Fluoro pop-up in green or yellow. And here I've got a fruit and nut pop-up. I think that's a 12 mil, um, yeah, fruit and nut one. So they're both on stiff hinges with a bit of putty, so they should sit up. And that's a good, that's a good two, two and a half inches. So hopefully we can get something on that. I might dose them in the bait spray. This geezer's given me no luck just yet. Give him a little kiss on the head because that's usually what works. Oh, I lost that. That's the bait spray cap. There we go. And hopefully we can land a new PB in the last five hours on one of my new rods. I feel like I've done all that I can now to try and save this session. We've got five hours to go. I'm not gonna to touch the rods now. It's either gonna happen or it isn't. But like I say, even if I don't catch on this session, I'm not gonna to be too upset, too disappointed. The last time I was here, I did catch and I just, I was in a bit of a bad, I was in a bit of a bad headspace and I didn't really enjoy my session, but I'm in a much better headspace right now. And even if I do blank, like I say, I'm coming back next month anyway, so, I'll make sure I get a load of PVA bags tied up and ready. And there'll also be uh, a guest in that video as well. I won't be on my own. So like I say, if it doesn't happen this time, I'm coming back in about four or five weeks anyway. I'm sure we can do something then. Big Red, where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. Where would he be? I'm clutching at straws here, guys. I just had a single beep on the right hand rod, which is the pineapple, the fluoro pineapple, but that's about all I can report at the moment. Just about to have my sausage sandwich, because I bought two, so I've had one, and I actually found some ketchup in there as well, so I did have some ketchup, but I just didn't know about it, <laughs> so this one won't be as dry. Oh, you know times are tough when I'm talking about my sausage sandwich. <laughs> the lucky charm is not working today. Oh, there we go. Well... Since my decent session at Wadmill, where I thought I was going to get back into the run of things, I ended up catching a load of bream. Um, I ended up losing a decent fish in the reeds and blanking. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, hopefully next video. I'm meant to be going to Shearwater, but it's weather permitting. Um, I haven't booked on yet. I kind of just want to say, I'm just going to go anyway, but at the same time, I don't know, we're going to see what the weather's doing, because yeah, oh god, it could be an absolute washout, but we'll see what happens. Well, I am now slowly packing away, but it's good to see a fish out on the bank. A young chap has just jumped in the far swim, that, you know the swim I was on about earlier, number 10 or 1 or whatever, the one at the far end of the car park, that's just produced a fish, now that's really interesting because he's that guy's been there five minutes, he's turned up and bang, he's had one. It's not a big one, but it's it's a fish. Now, I'm wondering, he's on there till Friday, he could have a good session because, like I said to you earlier, if the fish aren't in there, you ain't going to catch. But if they're all being pushed down there, because yesterday there was a few people fishing up there, um, maybe they were sat off the back of the wind, maybe the lines in the water pressured the water down there and they've moved up into there. I just said to him, I said, if they're, if they're all up in there, you're in for a great session because he's going to haul them out. He's been there five minutes. He's not even got his other rods out, and that one's gone already, and he's, he's had a mirror. It must be it must be around the £10 mark. But yeah, absolutely brilliant to see. 
that the fish are feeding, they are coming out, but I'm guessing it's all about being in the right spot. And again, that's where I need to keep making sure that my watercraft knowledge keeps improving and improving. I did a big long lap um, before I chose to fish in this swim. And I was adamant that the fish were over there. Obviously, I called it wrong, but fair play to the young lad. And if you're watching this, well done, mate. So before I wrap up on this video, I just wanted to quickly say, I've looked into and I've Googled this whole duck situation, right? Now it says that male ducks like to um, be dominant or they like to assert their dominance. So if there's a duck that's come over from somewhere that they don't recognize, or if they want to show that they're the dominant character or the, the dominant duck of the, of the lake, I guess, they will, they're going at it over there now. They will basically bite another duck's neck. Now I don't know, I have <laughs> Googled how do ducks mate? <laughs> Look, it's been a long session, okay? I've Googled how do ducks mate. I haven't looked at any images, any videos, don't worry about that. But it doesn't look like they were mating, it looks like they were fighting. It just so happened that it was a male duck and a female duck, so... I don't know if you can hear them, but they're at it again now. Oh, they're going for the female again. I've already saved her once, I can't do it again. Oh, it's all settled down, it's all settled down. I mean, I don't really know why I'm filming a duck that might possibly die. I mean, when I saved her this morning, oh, she's fine, she's fine. Oh, she's fighting back. Go on. <laughs> I'm getting into this. When I saved her this morning, you'd have thought she, that would have given her a, a chance to just get the hell out of here, but she's come back for some more. It looks like they're at it together now. Oh dear. I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> ding, ding. Well, that's it, game over. Um, I don't mean it in a, in, a, in a bad way. All ducks survived. <laughs> but I think that was a mating session because all the splashing stopped. The female got out of the lake, the male followed, and now they're just sat over on the bank. So just a normal Monday afternoon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't interfere too much, can you? Because it's just nature, isn't it? But saying that, whilst all that was going on, I had one single beep on the left hand rod. Probably the ducks. Now you're going to eat my high vis pop ups. I don't even know if that's good for you. <laughs> He can't swallow it. <laughs> he really wants it, but he can't swallow it. Oh, he's got it. And they all lived happily ever after. And there it is, 25 hours later. Well, 24, yeah, 25 hours later. I'm back in the car and I'm fishless, but I've got a smile on my face because I don't care. I've met so many nice people on this trip. Honestly, I think I spoke to... I spoke to Kaz and his dad. Big shout out to you guys. Really nice blokes. I'm sure I'll see you again at some point. But thank you for watching my videos. And also, um, there was... When I turned up, somebody was like, Oh, you're after Big Red, aren't you? He watches my videos. So shout out to him. Sorry, I didn't get everybody's names. But everybody that I met was brilliant. There was a, a, a dad and son again. Uh, a young lad that actually turned up. Fished two swims down from me. And he caught two fish. Biggest, well, I think, was about £15. Pounds, so... Fair play to him. Um, and yeah, there's just a couple of other people. So yeah, just shout out and thank you to everybody that watches the videos. Everyone that likes and comments, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. I just find it, I really do find it nuts that people sit down and just watch me on, on their TV. So thank you, honestly, appreciate it. But yeah, I'm not too bold about the blank. I had a good time. It's good to be away from home and it's good to just get out and be bankside. The weather's starting to get nicer it's nicer a word the weather's starting to warm up the sun's coming out and uh, like i say i'm going to be back here soon anyway so i'm sure we can do something a bit better next time on the fishing front but thanks for watching this one as always please like subscribe and i'll see you next time bish bash bosh